You're listening to Do That Well with your hosts, Brenda Brown and Karen Thrall, a podcast about real experiences and how to turn them into life lessons. Unscripted, honest, funny, genuine, and passionate, a series of conversations where we explore every aspect of human interaction and provoke each other to do life well. I've almost completely memorized that, you guys. (laughs) (laughs) On today's episode of Do That Well, we are going to talk about confrontation, which can sound quite daunting, and we are hopefully going to make it approachable. I would like to share that I was drawn to this topic because I am totally guilty of avoiding confrontation. It makes me anxious, nervous, I'm afraid people aren't going to like me, so I oftentimes will just avoid it entirely. Uh, On the other side of that coin, I really love talking and I really love building connection. And so I really wanted to explore this topic and understand for myself a little bit more of when when it's necessary. When should I make that connection and confront someone? When is it something that I should let it roll off my back? And what does that look like? So I brought this to you, Karen. Yeah, I know. And I was, <laughs> and even in our prep time, I was thinking for me, I have two areas I want to explore with you today. One is there's people I'm really invested in, so I'm going to want to uh, use that word, <laughs> that confrontation word. And But it's because I care so deeply in the relationship, and I know it's going to be good for us. And then there's the other side where I don't have much investment in somebody, and how do I bring up hard conversations when I don't have an invested relationship with them? And so those are the two, kind of the two segments that I, I'm really curious about today. And we will answer all of that and more. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> As always. Yeah. No, uh, but there are going to be times where in situations where it's really clear to you that you should confront someone. An example might be if they've caused you physical harm. That Mm -hmm. that is going to be a circumstance where you definitely want to confront that person about that. However, that is not what we're going to talk about today. We're not going to talk about (laughs) those times where it's very clear. We're going to talk to focus on the situations where you might need to exercise a little bit more judgment. And as we're talking about you know, if it's not clear to you whether or not you should confront someone and then some of those potential questions that you may want to ask yourself before you decide whether or not to confront them. We'll then talk about some ways that you can actually do the thing, the confrontation, how to approach it so that you can yield good results. And we'll end with talking about why this is important, the benefits of learning how to confront people. It's great. No small feat. <laughs> so jumping right in, what are questions? When are those situations where you're not sure? Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's lots of them. There's lots of situations where you might not be sure, right? That's what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because someone hurt your ego. They hurt your vanity. Maybe it's because they just annoyed you or they hurt you unintentionally. It, it's because you did them a favor and it that favor may not be returned. Those are just mm-hmm. a few off mm-hmm. the top of the, top of the cup mm-hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, I know there's dynamics. So there's the way you confront maybe a family member, like because it's family and it could cause a ripple effect through the whole family. So you're you don't know how to do that. It may be at work and it's your boss and you're really unhappy with something maybe your boss said or did, or it's a peer or it's people that report to you. It could be your community and your friends. Maybe you felt left out. Maybe you felt excluded or you um, felt misunderstood or whatever it is. And it really rubbed you the wrong way and it just, you were not okay with it. So there are these, we, we have it around us every day. There is that form of conflict around us all the time. And it's like, how do you know when to say something? How do you know when not to say something? And I love what you said about the ego. Sometimes it's just your ego's bruised. And and it's just that simple. And you go, yep, I just, my, my good old pride did not like that. And, and so you can, you can let that go. Totally. And I like a moment ago, you know, Karen, you did mention that 
the like guidelines or stipulations that you might have, I think could also be very different depending on the scenario that you're in. So I think mm. that I really like that you brought yeah. that to the table. I think that's definitely something to be mindful of as we go throughout this conversation is that you might need to ask yourself different questions or look at different parts of the relationship depending on the setting that you're in and what, mm -hmm. you know, what the, what the relationship is mm -hmm. to the person that you want to confront. Because what happens is we go and share with people that are close to us and we vent, it can turn into gossip sometimes, but then we don't do anything about it. And what we're saying, no, that is step one. The step two is then then you're going to go actually talk to the, the actual individual. And usually we stop. Once we've vented to our friends, we feel better and then we just let it go. But that's not actually um, the higher road. Because there is that element of the back backroom talk or the water cooler talk or the smack talk. And right. I think part of our motivation is if we can remove that, that whole portion and really go after confrontation in a healthy way. I think we're going to like ourselves more and we're just, it's going to be a great, great growing opportunity. That is the hope. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, so moving into what are some of those questions then that we want to ask ourselves if we are in a place of wondering, should I confront someone? Now for me, this is, my biggest one. Uh, I did not find this from an article. This is like a Brenda-ism. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the biggest questions I like to ask myself is, who am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. So do I want to confront this person for me? Do I want to, like, whose betterment is it for, I should specify? Mm -hmm. Is this going to make my life better? Is it going to make their life better? Or is it going to make both of our lives better? Mm -hmm. And Great that's like a really, really big one for me, because if I can answer that with this is 100% for myself, I just want to get this off my chest or I'm then for me, that's when I start to say, well, then is this confrontation necessary? Mm -hmm. Can you wait until you've calmed down and then maybe it won't be a big deal anymore? Is there is there like one person that I can confide in without smack talking this person? But can I just express that I'm feeling hurt? And will that make it better? Um, Do you think um, an exception, I'm totally curious, is if people don't have good boundaries, like would that be a time where it's a betterment for me? Like I I let people walk all over me. I, I'm i always the whatever. And do you think maybe would that be when it is healthy for betterment for me is – is I've got I've got to do this for myself because I I can't let this continue happening to me whether they change or not I have to make a change with this maybe mm -hmm. that would be the exception to the rule I'm gonna yes and you <laughs> okay okay go uh, <laughs> because I hear what you're saying and I I do think yes but I want to put a caveat on it okay because at that point I don't view it as only being for me anymore. Then I view it mm. as being for us mm. because then at that point, it's about learning how to renegotiate my boundaries with that person. Mm. So it's so then I want to confront them because it's going to make our overall relationship better. That's so well said. Yeah. And it's not yep. just for me. It's for yes. them too. Yes. Because it's unhealthy and right. you're trying to reframe it so there's a healthier relationship happening. Right. So it, they would win in the end. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's a big one for me. I don't know yeah. if, you, if you have any you want to bring in or if you want me to keep going because I will. <laughs> um, I, I was thinking, uh, I did think about, I think all of us have one or two topics that are really important to us and we don't always know what those are. And I'm learning over time that if it doesn't fall into those categories that are core values of mine, I, I'm going to be more forgiving or let it go. But when it's like, no, no, this, this goes against me and I, I need to say something, then I'm probably going to have a, a bit more courage to go talk to them, especially if it's an ongoing relationship. So I'm going to have to make it clear, like what's not okay with me and why. So I know that's one is that, do I even know 
when, like, what are those parts of my life that I really, I, I really don't want that. I don't want to negotiate or compromise my values on it. So that was something I had a thought about. I like that. Yeah. I really like that. This idea of you need to be aware enough of your values because mm-hmm. if you, if it doesn't go into one of those boxes of this is like a core value for me, Mm -hmm. then is it something that potentially I could just let roll off? And I like, you just said how like invested am I in this? Yeah. Yeah. That brings me to one of the other questions that I have, I think in this scenario is what are the risks here? And like, Mm -hmm. am I willing to take those risks? So you make me think of that because I think when you're deciding whether or not you want to confront someone, as you said, you want to look at that relationship and and asking yourself, well, what are the risks? If I confront this person and I lose this relationship, is that is that okay? Is that a risk that I'm willing to take if I'm going to to confront this person right now? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like where you're going with this. Is you know, this yeah. idea of really looking at uh the values and like the relationship that you have with that person anyhow, if somebody's really Mm -hmm. ticking or if they're really scratching at something that's like really dear to you, then are you okay risking confronting them about that? Because maybe, maybe the relationship needs to be renegotiated anyways. Yeah. Right. Anyways, a little okay. tangent there. A okay. Tangent there. <laughs> so let's move on to how, how do you then properly confront someone? And I think we have started to look at some of these just in the conversation we've had so far. I'm just going to tick off a whole bunch at you rapid fire and then okay. let's discuss. <laughs> so some some boxes to tick. If you're confronting, first of all, remember that it's a conversation. This isn't supposed to be an argument. We're trying to take that aggressive tone off of the word confrontation and make it yes. a mature, yes. adult responsible thing to do. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, we have to take out the aggression. We have to take out the argumentative side of it. It's a conversation. Mm -hmm. Secondly, on that note, wait for your emotions to settle. Yes, (laughs) You don't want to go into a confrontation when your emotions are ablaze or right after something's happened and you're just reacting to it. You want to make Mm -hmm. sure you take a moment to to calm down and find your find your mm-hmm. message. Um, clearly communicating. So this is one that we've started to talk about as well, that you need to make sure that when you're confronting someone, you're clearly communicating what went wrong, what you're complaining about, what you're bringing to the table. And you also need to clearly communicate what your hopeful outcome is, what mm-hmm. you're trying to get out of this conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to go back to that, it's not an argument, it's a conversation, mm-hmm. right? It, it, yeah, and there was um that one was I really like that one because when the person knows why, so the example in one of the articles was um you go up to your boss and you go you you're really rude. Well, that's attacking his or her character. But if you said, you know, yesterday when the team came in and they wanted to give you their update, you were on your phone the whole time. And it didn't look like you were listening. And I felt it was a bit rude to the team. That is a story. And it's really clear because it's context. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer in that. When you tell the story first, always tell the story first. And then context. I thought that was really good. The other one I really like is, I know I do this one. Um, I say, um, I've got my hat on. I I need to talk to you about, I need to talk to you about something that's uh, upsetting me. And my hope is, like, I want to hear what you have to say, and then out of it, we can really grow from it. So I, I kind of set them up that, hey, this is a hard conversation. So that's the other thing is I really like that. Um, and I, al- I also say, if it was me, I'd want you to tell me. So that's why I'm doing it. This is loving. Like, I'm showing you I love you because if the tables were turned, I'd want you to tell me this. So I had to think it through. What I want you to tell me this? Yes, I would. And that's my courage to bring it. So that's the stuff I, I notice I'll say if I feel like it's really important for me to say something. Definitely. And it's like 100% tell it in a story, making sure that you're bringing up the – 
what your issue is and then with your hope and being clear and communicative about that, I think, uh, again, it can be really easy for people to want to go in with guns a-blazing. It can be really mm. easy wanting to mm. go in uh, with placing blame or making really judgmental statements, um, you know, going back to our silly example, Karen, when you leave the breakout <laughs> and I trip on it, I just know you're doing that to piss me off. You always do this. You know, that's not an effective way that I could confront you. Instead, yeah. I could tell a story of, you know, today I was out and I was gardening and I, I tripped on the rake and I scraped my knee. And can we actually talk about the rake placement? <laughs> <laughs> But at the same time, that's so good, right? Because you're like, you don't want it to fester. And that's what happens if we don't say anything, it starts to fester. And then the person repeats their behavior, but they don't know that it upsets you. Right. So you, you, it is very loving to let the person know how it's impacting you or how it's affecting you. It's a very loving thing to do, even though you might be angry and your anger may not feel loving. <laughs> The actual telling the person is incredibly loving and we just have to calm the anger down before we tell them. Exactly. And I think so much of this is about making sure that you're not in a heightened emotional state yeah, when yeah. you go to have these conversations. Uh, just a couple more as well. Location, mm -hmm. timing. Those things are very important. Again, making sure you're not going to doing this right after it happens. So emotions are high <laughs> or... Yeah. You also can't wait too long. I think if you wait right. too long, then you're going to lose context. Mm -hmm. And then location, making sure you're in a nice neutral setting. You're not mm -hmm. attacking them while they're at work or, you know, at a birthday party. Yeah, <laughs> I, that, I, that was something I really appreciated is that when it's on your turf, they will see you as having uh, the upper hand. Mm -hmm. When it's on their turf, they're going to feel like you're personally attacking their space. So when you go to neutral, um, that's like a boardroom, a coffee shop, a park, a walk. Those are where the best conversations. I do find walking with somebody is my favorite. If I have to talk, have a hard conversation, walking is the best because you're in forward motion, which is symbolic, you know, as a good metaphor. But I, I really like that neutral ground makes it safe and I'm bringing the levels calm. Um, and even if you are sensitive like I I'm sensitive so I have to like hey by the way if my emotions get the best of me just I, that's not my intention so just just let me know if you find myself if you want to go uh just can you, can you calm down a bit because I, I won't know I'm doing it so just let me know so I, I tend to want I tend to kind of let them know hey I might be emotional I might you know get a little bit maybe overly sensitive and I'm glad you said that, Karen, because another way that you can make sure that you are doing confrontation well, a little plug for our <laughs> own podcast, uh, to go back to one of our last episodes is to be accountable for your part of the process. Mm -hmm. So I love that you just gave that example, this, I know that I can, my emotions can get the better of me. So I want to let you know going into this that if that's happening, please say something. Like that's you being accountable for the fact mm. that you know you're not going to do this perfectly. Yeah, yeah. And and you're both human. You're both human people interacting. Mm. You, we need mm -hmm. to have grace for one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tagging that, um, there was something I learned I thought was really interesting. I'd like to hear what you think on it. Um, so I thought it was good for me because I'm like, oh, that's a good point. I thought fluff problem fluff, like positive, negative, positive, so that they realize that the positives are more important than this negative. Like, hey, you know, I care about you. You know, I think you're the best. And I just love our friendship. I do have something we need to talk about that upset me. Da, da, da. But man, I, you know, you're just awesome. And like that, they were saying that's not necessarily a good idea. Oh, yeah. I they I think it's a horrible idea. Okay, so they <laughs> they said that um, kind and direct, just be kind and direct, and that's way better than uh, they call it praise, criticize, praise, mm -hmm. and they go that's not the way to do, it. and it makes sense because so in customer service, I always would say make sure your opening is 
warm and your endings warm so that you're not just like, you know, to the customer. And I guess there's, that's applicable there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to confrontation, it's be kind and be direct. Right. Be clear. Like you said earlier, be clear with your thoughts, be really clear and go in clear. And I think that's where I know, like we've said this in other podcasts, write down your thoughts first, Mm -hmm. record your, the way you're talking so you can hear it. Um, write it down in a journals and then walk away and read it again. Like there's all these ways, but be really clear. And I know that what's gotten me into trouble is when I, I'm being like walking on eggshells and I beat around the bush and it just makes it worse. Right. It makes it so much worse because they can feel the insincerity and it's confusing. Mm -hmm. So when you're being around the bush, people, it's not loving because you're afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm talking out of a place of fear. So I really like this kind and direct, just kind and direct. If that's yeah. our mantra, kind and direct. Kind and direct. It's- I actually was introduced to this concept that you're talking about, this uh, negative in the middle yeah. when I was in college. And I was told it's called a shit sandwich. Oh, so yeah, that sounds so you about right. Giving people shit sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Because when you think about it, yeah. you're still saying something really mean. You're just yeah. like being passive aggressive about it, mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. or less. Mm-hmm. See, that's it. That's it. It does give the air of passive aggressiveness. It does. And, and it control. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, uh, it's insincere. Because if you're really upset with somebody, that's not the time to tell them how great they are. Right. That doesn't, that's really confusing. It's a mixed message. Exactly. And they're going mm-hmm. to hear the negative thing. And that's the thing that they're going to clomb onto. They're not going to mm-hmm. hear that they also love you to death. They're only going to hear that, yeah. that what you said that was bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another thing, there's a book called um, The Psychology of Persuasion, and it's by Robert uh, Cialdini. And in it, it talks about because. So, like, when do you talk to somebody? Okay, are you okay with it? I'm not okay with it because. And if you can finish the sentence, like, it's about persuasion. So, I have the power of the word because. Because the listener will understand why you're saying what you're saying. Would you like this these red shoes because it goes great with that scarf you're wearing? Like it, we need that because. So when you are going to confront somebody, know your because. Well, because you really upset me. Okay. That's not going to be enough. <laughs> right. Because whenever I hear someone use those words towards me, I lose my confidence. Oh, that's that maybe that's more that's going to be more apropos or whatever you know so I I thought that was really cool don't forget the word because when you're confronting Mm -hmm. and make sure it's not ego-based you know right it's that context that we were talking about you need you need to be able to understand the whole scenario Mm. okay well we are getting close to the end of our time here so let's talk about why we want to do this end off on a strong note yes (laughs) It's the mature thing to do. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. And um, I want to, there's one part of this article that I want to uh, put here is the truth is simply being able to look another person in the eye and calmly communicate your concerns with them is the adult thing to do. And I think that's awesome. It is the adult thing to do. We're not uh, this whole venting and uh, gossiping and using your friends or people you love to vent and then you feel better. That's we're we're more than that now. And now that's okay, but it doesn't solve it. It just gives you the courage to go now speak to the person, you know. So even as friends that we remember to be that voice to that person who's venting to you going, okay, so what are you going to do? How are you going to talk to them? Let's practice. This is going to be so good for you. This is so mature of you. So yes, it's mature. It is. It is. And to go back to a few things we've touched on so far really quickly, Again, we are trying to take the aggressive edge off of the word connotation. Mm-hmm. So we yeah, try yeah. and further connection between people. And when you take the aggression off of connotation, it also, or excuse me, when you take the aggression <laughs> off of confrontation, <laughs> it then also t- makes it so that any connotation, that <laughs> confrontation <laughs> for you all, uh, might have about uh, it being immature. Because I do think sometimes mm-hmm. when we think of confrontation, you think of kids like throwing a fit or throwing tantrums. Yeah. And we think of it being this immature act. 
but it's yeah. not if you can do it calm mm-hmm. and so good and with directness and with context and all of these things we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. And it's like your pra- okay, another thing I love is um, it's honest. It's a very honest expression of yourself. Um, it takes courage, which means you're going to overcome fears and nerves, and you know you're going to be in the right place. Um, I also put here, um, I want this to reconnect us. Mm-hmm. Like, well, it's all about building relationship. And I think when I confront them, my hope is that it's going to actually restore us. Because we got to be careful not to confront because we're right. That's It's not about being right. It's not an it's argument. About, no, it is not an argument. No. But yes, this idea of reconnecting, that was where I was going to go with this. Yeah. You know, earlier when I was saying, when you asked me, well, what about setting boundaries? Is that for you? And I said to you, well, no, I think that's about it being for two people at that point. Yeah. Because at that point, yeah. I'm trying to make sure that I'm going to create connection with this person. I'm going to try and deepen our relationship. So having these, conversa- these conversations where you're confronting someone for their behavior or the way that they've made you feel or whatever it may be, it can actually really deepen relationships. Yes, it can. Yeah. That's so good. Um. I like what I, you said about that, Karen. It about, safety. Yes. Okay. I was just going to go <laughs> back to that too, because another thing, this would probably be my final thought is safety and learning. Um, is this, I put here, uh, am I safe? Does this make me feel safe if I'm being excluded at work? If, if I, if I feel really, I'm being criticized, it's really breaking down my morale it's making me question my work let's say Mm -hmm. or uh, with your friends if all your friends are making fun of somebody and you're like ah I just is this what you do when I'm not here where you just it creates the thing I don't feel safe now that's a good reason to go talk you know hey when you make fun of x y and z I go well are you gonna make fun of me when I'm not around and I guys I just I want I don't want that kind of conversations with you that's okay that's safe the other one is is this gonna am I gonna learn am I gonna learn from you when by me bringing this to you maybe I'll learn something new about you and I'll learn something new about myself so these are always confrontation to go as a student and as a learner to every confrontation will keep the ego down will keep Mm -hmm. the right and wrong down and then you can just really be loving and I'm here to learn I'm here to make mistakes while I'm talking to you because it's gonna be a shared conversation Right. It is. It is such a learning experience. And my hope (laughs) is that we can all go forward remembering that it's not about aggression. It's not about anger. It's about maturity. It's about connectivity. It's about learning how to be a clear, effective communicator. Yeah. And it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. So we are taking back the word confrontation. (laughs) Woohoo. Do that well. (laughs) It's so sexy. It is. It's very fetch. There we go. A good uh, little movie movie reference. Extra (laughs) cool if anyone knows what it's from. (laughs) All right. Well, that is the time that we have with you all today on Do That Well. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll be back next week with a new topic. Thanks for listening.